Hello. I just want to uh, make a little rant here uh, about my recent trip to jail. Some things that I would like to cover. Um, first of all, I just want to run through a list of names here. Joseph, Samson, Jeremiah, Micaiah, Zedekiah, Daniel, John the Baptist, Peter, James, John, Silas, Paul, Epaphras, Aristarchus, Junia, and Jesus. What do all these people have in common? Well, they were all put in bonds. They were all put in prison. So I am in good company here with all these people, all these godly people who were put in prison. Um, and I want to say that what I was put in jail for and what actually happened are two separate things. Okay, um, Jesus was not uh, murdered, arrested, you know, beaten, and then ultimately murdered for uh, telling the truth. Okay, Jesus was a blasphemer. Okay, that's why he was arrested. Um, see, the way that the world sees things and the way that God sees things are completely different. Um, so I want to say, 2 Timothy 3.12 says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Are you facing persecution? Um, and I'm not saying that everybody who uh, is Christian must go to jail, uh, but are you willing to? Are you willing to be arrested for what you believe? And... Um, I mean, to have that on your record, it's going to be a negative thing. You're not going to be arrested for being a hero, okay? I mean, people are going to say that what you did was wrong, and you deserve the persecution, okay? Are you willing to face that? Are you willing to suffer for Jesus Christ when he was beaten, arrested, and murdered for you? Are you willing to suffer for him? You know, Paul said that he is ready not only to be bound in bonds, but also to die for the name of the Lord Jesus. Can you say the same? And there are many who will say, yeah. There are many who claim to be Christian, and they aren't. The Bible clearly says that not, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. There will be many in that day that will say, Lord, Lord, who will not enter heaven. Um, you know, and we look at the parable of the sower, um, the the seed that was laid on the stony grounds, which I have talked about, and I want to cover that whole parable in the future, hopefully soon, but, you know, we'll say Mark 4.17, it says, and, and they have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Okay, this is talking about someone who is not saved. They are claiming to be a Christian, but when they're going to face persecution, maybe face arrest, or whatever, because of the word, all of a sudden they're going to back off. Okay, whoa, <laughs> you know, I actually don't believe anymore. <laughs> you know, never mind about that. I don't want to face persecution for this, you know. Um, so, I hope that you really are willing to suffer for Christ as he suffered for you. Um, you know, and words are one thing. But I have proof that I have suffered persecution for the name of the Lord Jesus, and I will, I'm sure in the future, continue to suffer persecution. Um, <clears throat> this is definitely not the first time that I've been to jail. I've probably been in jail six or seven times. And every time that I went to jail um, before this, you know, I thought that, you know, I was like, wow, you know, I messed up. I shouldn't have been doing this stuff. Uh, but this time when I got arrested, I'm... I know that God is, is fine with what I did, and, uh, you know, I know that I was wronged. So, it is what it is, and, uh, <clears throat> I, uh, when I was there, I studied the Word diligently. I wrote, uh, probably, I only had the King James Bible for the last four days or so, so, but I wrote probably like 30 or 40 pages worth of scripture, because I like to write out scripture. Um, I have written probably hundreds of pages of scripture. Um, probably, 
probably like 700 pages or more. Um, when I first started doing it, I didn't know about the King James Bible issue, so I was using different translations and stuff, so some of that doesn't all count. But I learned things from it, and I learned, you know, the differences in the different translations. But And I'm working on writing more books, because I get these 70-page notebooks, <coughs> and then I write scripture, uh, and, um, and then I'm going to hand them out. Uh, so I'm working on new ones for that. But I've already done a lot of those. Um, but anyways, yeah, I just got closer to the Word in God, and my faith was shown to the other people there. I made new acquaintances, and uh, these people are going to be going to prison for a while, who I met. And um, I'm probably going to write them, like I already do. I've already written a handful of people in prison. Um, these are all letters from prison. Um, and of course, these are all talking about the Word of God. These aren't just, you know, hey, how you doing, letters. This is, hey... I want to teach you the Word of God. Um, so, you know, people can say, you know, I'm a bad guy, I'm not a Christian, uh, you know, I don't witness, you know, have you checked out my YouTube channel? I do witness. Um, they'll say, you know, I just focus on one thing. Have you checked out my YouTube channel? I focus on, uh, you know, everything pertaining to the Word of God, um, you know, and uh, I want to reach the loss, you know, and I, I take my time to write people. So, this time in jail, it just, it just you know, I think that God wanted me to be there. I think that all things work for the good for those who believe. And, um, you know, I fully believe the Word of God. And so I have new people to write now. And, you know, some of these people in prison, too, I've sent them King James Bibles. I want to make sure that, you know, the people who I'm talking to, they have the actual Word of God. So, you know, I take care of them the best that I can. And I'm not trying to brag. But I'm just saying, you know, there are benefits from me going to jail. I have new people to write now that I can possibly get saved. Um, also, while I was in jail, I got an awesome letter I'm very grateful for. This lady wrote me. I printed it out. Um, it's like two pages here. Pretty long. Just saying that she really appreciates my videos, and she wants me to continue making them, and it's very encouraging. Um, you know, she said she you know, agrees with a lot that I'm doing here, and uh, just wow, I thanked her for that. Thank you so much for this letter. This is a major boost of encouragement, you know, I had a great time for it. Um, and I want to mention something else that's really interesting. When I was in jail, for some reason the sheriff pulled me out and talked to me. I don't really know why. I already pled guilty and stuff. I, he didn't, I don't know, he didn't really bring up anything new. I don't know what the purpose was, but it was interesting anyways. Uh, pretty much, he asked me, you know, well, do you have a job? And I said, no. Um, and he said, well, what do you do? And I said, well, I study the Word of God. And, you know, I guess that wasn't good enough for him. You know, is that, is that all you do? Oh, well, yeah, that's pretty much all that I do. So, uh, and he's kind of like, well, you know, sometimes uh, people focus too much on one thing, and it's like a problem, it becomes, you know, it's not good, you're just focusing on one thing, and you know, if we weren't, I'd probably agree if we weren't talking about the Word of God, okay, nobody can ever study the Bible too much, okay, but I realize that he's a lost man, and he doesn't understand that, okay, um, I think that's really interesting, though, because of Acts 26, 24, um, it says, and as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself, much learning doth make thee mad. And I'm like, wow, that's pretty much what the sheriff said. You know, because I've been studying the Bible too much, and I don't work or, or focus on anything else, that it's making me crazy. Um, no, it's just strengthening me, my faith, and it's, um, it's, just, it's giving me, God's giving me understanding, and I know the scriptures, and, uh, <laughs> you know, there's... You know, I'm going to suffer persecution. I already know that, you know. So, it's like, well, you know, if you wouldn't have done that and everything, you wouldn't have been in this situation. But I know that I'm going to be in that situation because I believe the Lord Jesus and I believe His Word. And I'm going to profess it. And I'm going to face persecution because of it. So, you know, it's like, you don't understand. You're a lost man, okay. I understand that. You know, and, and if I would have fought this thing, that I might, have, I might have came out guilty still because the facts are that the judge and the jury, they're all lost people. Okay, that's just the way that it is, okay? The, the road that leads to hell is broad, okay? And I truly believe that because I believe what the Bible says. 
Um, you know, and the sheriff tried to tell me the story of um, these protesters. They were protesting an abortion clinic. These religious people protesting an abortion clinic, and some woman goes inside and kicks someone in the abortion clinic. Okay, and I was like, well, you know, I wasn't physical. But at the same time, I was like, you know, it's ironic that that she's the bad one, that she's going to get arrested because she kicked somebody when this abortion clinic, they're murdering, you know, thousands of babies. You know, they're getting away with murder. And he was just kind of like, yeah, you know, he didn't really say, I think it just, it just, choo, just went right over his head. I mean, really. I mean, think about it, you know. She kicked him, okay, you know. What about murdering thousands of babies? Oh, well, that's not actually murder. That's, that's all legal and everything, you know. See, see what's, what the world sees and what the Lord sees are completely different things, okay. So, I just, uh, if you are saved, you know, be ready to face persecution. Be willing to face persecution. Um, if you're not willing to face persecution for Christ, then there's a severe problem there. Um, and nobody can say that I'm not willing to, because I have, and I will, and I have the proof. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm thankful that I have people who appreciate my videos, and, uh, you know, even the people in jail encouraged me. They said, they, they even knew, you know, they were lost, and they knew that, that preachers would get arrested for, for preaching the truth. And um, I'm glad that I have more acquaintances to write now. The Lord has given me. Um, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to join some prison ministry, you know, to do it. And all they do is, they go in there and they just tell a story or whatever. They don't even read the Bible. They don't teach the Bible, enough of that. It's, it's just a waste of time. You know, I give scriptures. I write people that I've met in prison, uh, not part of any, you know, group or anything. I just go, I just write them, you know, as a person to a person. And um, I hook them up with the Bible, and I give them doctrine. I give them verses and the truth. Um, so, anyway, yeah. Just remember, you know, the world doesn't see things the same way as God sees things. And if you're saved, then you need to see things differently than the world does. You need to study the scriptures daily. You do need to. You need to be able to defend your beliefs from scripture. Okay? It's very important. So, thanks for watching, and I'll continue to make videos. It's just a little rant. God bless.